Chayrite pantes. Like, learn this. Mantana te tuto. Mantana te tuto. Learn this. Study this, right? Okay. And that's going to come in handy. Now, back. Hupo strepsomen. Hupo strepsomen. Like, let's return. Hupo strepsomen. Um, so now when we look at this morphology, uh, we can recognize with the epsilon, right, on the front, if 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 we recognize this verb, uh, we know that, oh, okay, so that auxiliary or in Greek, auxesis, um, is the indicator, it's the marker grammatically that shows, you know, past tense. So either it's going to be the imperfect or the aorist. But now when we start looking at what happened to the root of, you know, uh, let's see, I think I might still have that page up, right? Uh, I guess I can go here. Yeah. Fineroo. Fineroo. Okay, so phi alpha nu epsilon rho. And then we have the contract vowel, omicron. Remember there's three flavors. Alpha contract, epsilon contract, or omicron contract. And by far the epsilon contract is definitely more prevalent, more frequent, but there's a reasonable number of omicron and alpha contract versus um a new testament. This is an omicron contract. Um, so let's see, let's get back to where we were. So, so we should recognize, yeah, so that right there, so that idea of revealing, let me go back there, revealing, make visible, clear, this idea. Um, sometimes Omicron contract verbs can kind of be causative. I've already pointed out before that sometimes it's data Omega verbs, right? Like, let's say we have, um, uh, I'm trying to think of one. Um, but anyway, if the ending is, is data omega in the lexicon, in other words, first person singular, it's typically a causative verb. So you take the base idea of the root and you put it in the sense of causing somebody to do that base idea of the root. That's typically what you got with is data omega. Similarly, but not as frequent, I don't think, um, that, not my experience, but sometimes I've noticed that Omicron um contract verbs can also just like that be causative verbs so yeah to make or cause something to be visible or become clear that's what they mean by make to cause it to become clear or visible right so um so up here yeah so we got this base root that we had you know uh, right there we saw that you know right here with these letters before we bump up against the contract vowel right and then that contract vowel omicron lengthens to an omega and then we get this characteristic sort of thing where we put the theta and the eta when we're doing the aorist, you know, in the aorist indicative mood, um, passive voice, right? So that's what we got. And, and this marker here, epsilon, shows, oh, okay, together with this, you know, with the, what we're seeing here at the end and then also here, it's like, yeah, that's that's aorist. And then um, again, lengthen Omicron. And then this, now if, now if I was doing uh, first person that I, Write that down here already. I think I did, yeah. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Anyway, I'll change this. So um yeah. So if I just put a new, so this is first person. Ego if I nerothe. Ego if I nerothe. So I was revealed or I was made clear. I was made visible, right? Um, shu if I nerothes. Shu if I nerothes. You were made visible, you were made clear, you know, you yeah. Um, and, and and then typically what you would have, if you're saying by whom, well, the way you would do that is, is you would usually use a prepositional phrase, upo, right? And then, you know, whether there's an article or not, is it, you know, by the something or is it just by, you know, by something? So whether you have the article or not, uh, but your your noun needs to be in the genitive, it needs to be in the genitive. Because if it means, date, if it's dative case, you know, hypothesis, dotike, dative. Hypotosis, the case, right? A, or, right? So how do we write or in that sense? Because eta all by itself can mean a lot of different things. So you want to have a soft breathing mark with this uh, acute, well, it could be a, um, acute, I mean, or grave, but that's the idea of or, right? So soft breathing mark with an acute accent, that's or. So, um, now, uh, dotike, A, A, or, um, ITK, ITATK, ITATK, ptoses, you know, ptoses, like uh, plural, you know, like uh, cases. So, um, so, so these, um, would mean something else. Each one would, you know, mean something else. Um, so, but if it's in the genitive with hupo, that's what we're talking about. 
genitive with the hoople. Then you look at the context. It doesn't have to be tr translated this way, but it's pretty often. If you have hoople and then you have the gen genitive, especially if it's a person, uh, it doesn't have to be a person. It could be like, I could say, especially the context here, right? So we're talking about being visible or revealed. Well, that would seem to be associated with light, right? So if I took the word, uh, um, now I'm going to start with the nominative first, to, right? To, fos, to fos, right? So we have a circumflex there, to fos. That's nominative because it's udeteron, it's neuter, always. If it's um, udeteron, neuter, whether it's plural or or, or singular, it doesn't matter, plural or singular, um, the nominative, e eutheia, or onomastike, tosis, Eutheoptosis. Kai, hey, aitiatike, the accusative. Aitiatike. Um, tuto est in host tuto. Host to onoma, kai to fos. Um, so both of these are neuter. Udeteron. Udeteron ptosis. Um, so, yeah. Udet, let's see. Udeteron. Udetera. Udetera. So there's the uh, feminine. I don't want to use the feminine with it. Hey, udetera ptosis. But if I just use it just all by itself, I, I would use the singular nominative or uh, singular uh, neuter. So, and then we say udeteron, you know. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. I was talking about not uh, ptosis. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Actually, let me, let me retract that. I combine that with ptosis, which is case. Udeteron is the um, is the gen is the gender. Sorry, sorry, the gender. So togenos, togenos. So togenos. Yeah, well, one translation of genos, togenos, is gender. Doesn't have to be. Can, there's other meanings. You can look it up in lexicon if you want. Um, so yeah, gender. And there we have, um, like we said. Uh, masculine, uh, feminine, or neuter. So we basically have arsenicon, arsenicon, right? So togenos, this is udeteron. So that's why I've got my endings singular, you know, uh, nominate or neuter, sorry, neuter. So omicron nu. So udeteron, arsenicon, um, we'll get to udeteron in a second. Uh, thelucon, thelu. Con, and then udetron, right? Udetron, udetron. I think it's here. I think so. Let me check. Udetron. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, u. Udetros. Yeah, udetron. So we're gonna put the when you type it in that. Um, uh, at least in this particular lexicon, most of the time. I mean, maybe others, maybe that's not the case. But for this one, you want to put the, if it's a epithetone, if it's a adjective, you want to put the masculine form and that's what's going to be there. And then once you look up the masculine, then you can see the other ones. Oh, well, here's the, here's the telucon, okay, to udeteron, okay, arsenicon. So omicron sigma is the eothea. The, you know, this is always what you're going to get, eothea, ptosis. You're always going to get the um, nominative case, right? These are nominative case for togenos or feminine, or sorry, pletunticon, uh, which means um, plural. Pletunticon is plural. So you would say tagena or tagene, or sugnomen, tagene. So udeteron, um, udeteros. Yeah, udeteron, that's the way. That, yeah, I got the accent in the right place. But yeah, um, Genos, yeah. Togenos would be uh, Togenos um, is Tagene. Mm, yeah. So with the Eta. Gene. And let's see. Uh, you got a lot of different, yeah, generation, class, sort. Uh, and then there's something there that will say, yes, yeah, for grammar, it will mean, um, yeah, pretty sure. Should have something in there. So um let me put it in English. Grammar? No. Um gender. Yeah, there you go. Gender. Yeah, so this idea, wow, there you go. Gender. Yeah. So I guess not not in a grammatical sense, but yeah. So 
Um, so togenos. There might be another um, word that we could use as well that we would actually find in, in there that they actually used that in ancient times, grammatically speaking. So we have ancient writers prior to Christ coming. I mean, they were Greeks. Um, Aristobulus. Um, let's see. Oh, he was a historian. Ah, I'm forgetting. But anyway, there's some uh, Greek guys that were gram grammarians and they wrote some pretty extensive stuff of how to do grammar um, in Greek, which has really helped us a lot to, to maintain this stuff. So anyway, so enough about that. Yeah, tofo. So let's go back here. So togenos, um, tagen, let's see, did we establish it was tageni? I think we did, right? I think so. Gene. Yeah, tageni. Geneta megiste. So this would be, um, yeah, so this would basically be the greatest um, class. So they're using it in the sense of class, and that's what they're trying to show. Magiste. The magiste class, yeah. So anyway. So yeah, again, so that's the plural for either, again, when you're talking about uh, neuter, whether it's singular or plural, uh, it doesn't matter. The uh, nominative and the accusative are the same form, right? So if you're, if you're uh, singular, then the one that's for nominative singular and accusative singular, same. Hosper, like, hosper, togenos, to, togenos, togenos, aitiatike, right? Accusative. Kai, eothea, eothea, onomastike, onomastike, right? So, but if you go to pletunticon, you know, plural, then you've got tag, tagene, tagene, and kai tuto, um, like this, tuto es in, um, uh, eu, how te, how te, let me use the, the feminine, how te, not tuto, that's neuter, how te est in eutheia, okay, itiatike, so, yeah, so let's see, let's go back here, so togenos, so if we use the noun to, to, to fos, the, um, the uh, genitive would be to, um, to uh, photos. Oh, no, it'd still be a uh, circumflex. Photos. Two photos. Mm -hmm. Two photos. So, yeah, if we said, uh, yeah, we could say that. Let me just copy and paste that. By the light. That's what that would be. By the light. So, that's what we'd say. Um, yeah. So, if we said, uh, yeah, let me. Get rid of that. Put that up here, I guess. So, yeah. So, this is the idea. Su. Su efineroces. Su efineroces. So, you were revealed. You were made clear. Upo tu photos. By the light. Upo tu photos. Right? Ego efineroces. It's a, a new at the end. Ooh, let me get my Greek keyboard. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Efineroces. Efineroces. Ego, if I know thing, I was revealed, I was made clear by by what? How do I say by what? Hupotinos, right? So we've got our tis, tinos is the genitive, tis as an eothea, tinos, tini, that's third declension. If you're familiar with third declension endings, it's following the pattern, and then tina, right? Um, if we're neuter, it would be t, tinos, tini, t. Yeah, so again, aitiatike, kai um, eothea, toalto, the same, toalto. So, that's one use of the personal pronoun, using it, um, well, if you use it generically like the way I am, we would use the neuter singular. So, toalto, to just say it's the same, toalto, the same, the same, right? So, if I say, if I say, um, I want to use it with masculine just to give an illustration. Let's say, um, let's say I'm saying this. Ho autos curios, the same Lord. Ho autos curios. Ho Jesus esten ho autos curios pros me, toward me, kai soy. I hope. El piso. <laughs> I hope. Um, autos curios. So here's masculine, singular, right? Autos curios. But when we just use it in a generic sense, we say to auto, the same, right? To auto. Um, so back to my point, 
to uh, so this is the genitive hegenike ptosis hegenike ptosis the genitive case um so we have that we have to use this uh prothesis this preposition prothesis right I'll give you that word and that's a uh, third declension and it's uh feminine so we say hey prothesis yeah hey prothesis so the preposition preposition right let me just check myself on doki uh doki mazo a mountain. Let me test myself. Let me check myself here. Uh, see if I'm remembering that right. Pro, the sis. Pro, the sis. Yeah. So if you go down here, grammar. What does it say about grammar? Uh, grammar preposition. Yep. Grammatically speaking, preposition. So there's who used it that way. Um, yeah. So processes. So using it in the in the grammatical sense. Um, processes say mine, say mine, say, say mine, say mine, say mine, say mine, signifies literally, but you can think of it as you can just simply think of it as means, right? What does this mean? What does this signify? Say mine, um, hey, processes say mine, preposition, anglisti, anglisti. So that sti kind of ending is what we say when we use in different languages. So Hellenisti is the uh, language of the Helones, you know, which is the Greeks, right? So the word Greek is, doesn't come out of the root of Greek, right? As you can tell, you know, so anyway. Um, so Anglisti, so out of England, right? Um, Anglo-Saxon kind of thing. Um, yeah. Anglisti. Um, Anglisti. I think that's how it's spelled. Anglisti. Um, yeah, Anglisti. So, yeah, in English, right? And it's basically epirema. This is an adverb. So, um, yeah, a lot of times the way adverbs sometimes are used um, in a sense, almost like where it's an indeclinable word, right? So, yeah, I'm not going to elaborate too much on that. I mean, if that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. I'm not going to talk about that too much right now. Um, but yeah, the idea of just saying, you know, hey, um, you know, I'm saying something, blah, blah, blah. And then you want to say in English, this is one way to say it. Just simply say Anglisti or blah, 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 blah. I'm saying this in Greek, Hellenisti, right? Or I'm saying this, blah, 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 blah. In Hebrew, Hebreisti, Hebreisti, right? So Anglisti. So hoprothesis semine preposition anglisti right so it means in english um preposition right so anyway so yeah hupo how they hey prothesis this preposition um ananke again it's necessary to have um ten genike you know the 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 genitive ptosin ten genike ptosin you know it, it needs to have the genitive um, case. Um, so I just use this in the accusative, tain pitocin. Um, yeah, this is third declension. So I'm going to go into that here. This is third declension. So to, to fos, to fo, photos. Yeah, that's third declension, neuter, uh, noun there. So anyway, anyway, that's what we need to do. That, that's the point. You know, whatever noun you use, first declension, second declension, third declension, it doesn't matter. Um, but you know, or a pronoun, you can even use pronoun. Um, it needs to be in the genitive case. And it can be plural, it can be singular. Plexunticon, plural, anicon, singular, right? Anicon. So um, I guess I can write that. Anicon, let's see. Anicon, anicon, plexunticon, plexunticon. So there's plural. Plural and singular. Now, if you if you learn your Greek numbers, when you say hen, duo, hen, duo, tria, desera, right? When you if you learn hen, that's the neuter form. Heis is the masculine, but if you hen, well then when you see this henny, you should recognize. Hmm, does that mean one? 
Yeah, this has to do with one. This has to do with the idea of singular, right? Singular. So Henikon, that'll help you remember it, hopefully. And then Plethos. Plethos or Plethos? To, to Plethos? To Plethos. Um, a lot of times it's in the Gospels whenever there was a, you know, plenty, you know, plural, like plenty. There's this bunch of people that are following Jesus around. Sometimes that's one of the words that is used. Uh, I guess I'll look at this one. Um, yeah, Plethos. I think it's... Plethos or Plethos? I think it's Plethos. I don't think it's Plethos. Plethos. To Plethos. Nine. So this is short. That's where we can have a circumflex here. Uh, to Plethos. So that's neuter. To Plethos. And um, yeah, that would be third declension. Yeah, this here, the Epsilon Omicron would morph over time, become Plethos. To Plethos. To Plethos, right? To Plethos in the genitive. Um, anyway, plethos is that kind of the idea of multitude, right? That's what we just saw. Multitude, masses, majority, right? So that you, so you can recognize that. Plethos or plethuticon. Plethuticon. And um, yeah, these kind of endings like that, con, is kind of the idea of suggesting hey, epitheton, adjective. So so that's what we have here. We have a feminine version. TK. Um, EK. Um, TK. Dot TK. 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 Um, so here we've got econ, you know, so not so much the tau with it, but the e, ek. So ek, econ, ecos. Yeah, that's kind of a lot of times taking a, a, a root and putting that ending on it and you make it a pithaton. It's not the only way to make a adjective, but that's kind of, yeah. So you, you know, hopefully you'll recognize that. So as we can see, this doesn't have that kind of ending, but this does, you know, uh, onomastike, ik, right? Um, so ikon, um, ikon, even tikon, right? Ikon. So anyway, so there's, yeah, singular and plural. Um, so anyway, back up to our um, creed here. Theos e fainerose. So hopefully you're recognizing that, yeah, we've, we, we get a lengthening here. We get the aspiration, so that we get the theta with the eta. So not so much the aspiration per se, although that is going to come into play when we talk about this down here. But they definitely the theta eta idea that it's aorist, indicative mood, path, uh, patheticos. There you go. There's passive. So passive voice, passive voice. So passive voice, aorist, indicative mood. Yeah, you can expect to see theta eta at the ending, right? Just before the ending gets, you know, whatever, you know, part of the ending. Um, so yeah, like we said, we start out with uh, ego efaineroce, shu efaineroces, auto efaineroce, there's third person singular, and then themen, right? Efaineroce, man. He mes efaineroce, man. We were revealed, we were made clear, right? Um, and then te, ete. So hopefully you've learned the basic uh, starting point for endings where it's... Uh, you know, for the endings for verbs, where we're talking about present tense, indicative mood, active voice. You know, we've got uh, basically where we have an omega first, right? Ego, like ego grafo, su grafes, right? So we just have a regular verb. It's not contract verb. It doesn't have anything special about it. It's like, it's going to be like grafo, you know, ego grafo, ego su grafes, autos grafe, or alte, she, she writes. Aute grafe, she writes. Um, he mes grafomen, right? Grafomen. So we got omicron men, omen, right? Grafomen. He mes grafomen. We write. Uh, um, mes grafete. So see the epsilon, tau epsilon. Well, this is a lengthened form of it here with this whole idea of what we're doing, the heiress indicative. So that's kind of point I'm making there. And then, of course, the last one, usen, right? Usen. So, uh, ego grafo, su grafes, autos, aute, auto, neuter, auto, um, uh, grafe, and then he mes grafomen, who mes grafete, autoi, or autai, they, feminine, masculine, whatever, um, graf, let's see, graf, grafusen, grafusen. So, here's the third person singular. Third person plural, sorry, plural. 
ending. So yeah, this is just the regular um when we're talking about if you're looking oh, <laughs> using my Hebrew keyword we're talking about that. So PIA. Um so this is yeah what we're talking about. So when you're looking at Strong's, you're looking at that website I use there, um, that convention that seminaries use, so many use, where it's tense and then mood and then voice. Yeah, this is what we got. So we got present tense, indicative mood, active voice. Um, this is the verb endings, right? So here we got the aorist tense. We don't, this is present tense. Here we got the aorist tense, indicative mood, passive voice, right? So here, yeah. So we get the lengthen. So the, again, what was this verb? This was uh, uh, finero. Oh, so it's an omicron contract, right? Finero. Oh, before we have the final omega, we get that contract letter in there. That in the lexicon, it shows it. It kind of unpacks it, right? But when it's used, you know, in words, it rarely shows up. So sometimes shows up in some things. You'll see it in the infinitive and stuff, whatever. But um, Efaneroce. So efaneroce, autos, efaneroce, theos, efaneroce, theos, efaneroce, right? But here we've got humes, efaneroce, te. Yeah, humes, efaneroce, te. So you were revealed, you were made clear. And then um, then it would be san, or so it's kind of like usin. Or would we have that here, usin? But it's obviously, you know, the, the diphthong here is eta. And then instead of sin, it's san, you know. So this is more, you'll see that alpha shows up a lot in the aorist, you know, for, for things. So, um, but anyway, hopefully that helps if, you know, A is something like that, but, but, you know, passive voice, patheticos, passive voice, um, indicative mood, um, aorist tense. Um, yeah. So if I know, I'll say. So, um, yeah, let me move that down here. Get that. Out of yeah, put that there and even this, right? So here's back to our creed. Uh move those guys off to the side. So theos if I son in sarki. So here's the third declension. Well, here's our preposition, a prothesis, how te is in a prothesis. This is our preposition. So again, how te is like hutos, or it's like tuto, the hutos is masculine, nominative. Tuto is uh, nominative, or sorry, yeah, nominative or accusative for udeteron, for neuter. And then haute is the feminine, right? So it's the feminine. Um, eothea, it's nominative. Eothea, ptosis. So, um, so, yeah, anyway. So this is a preposition, hey, prothesis. Hey, prothesis, n. So n always goes Pantote, always. Or there's another word, shows up more more so in Attic, but um, eh, my, I think it's in the New Testament. Certainly it points to words that share the root, um, like, you know, I, Ionion, Ionios, or Ion, or, you know, as a noun, Ionios is an adjective. So, but it's Aie, right? Aie. And maybe the, Accents like that, but anyway, it's 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 this spelling, and that means pos pantote, pantote. Um, so I put the accent right here, pantote, pantote, right? So that means always, right? It's the idea of like forever, eternal, right? Um, doesn't have to be used. I mean, we can use it in our regular earthly limited life sense where we say pantote, ego. Grafo pantote. I write always. That doesn't mean I'm writing into eternity. I mean, it just means, you know, you're making some context. We were talking about over some long period of time and you say, hey, ego pantote pollo tuto. I always do this. Ego pantote pollo. There's an excellent contract. Poi ello. Su poyes. You do. You make. Ego pollo. So, epsilon contract, right? Ego pollo. I do. Ego pollo tuto. I do this. You know, that's so I'm using the neuter, um, accusative there, ego pollo tuto. Um, so back to this. So here's the preposition, he prothesis en, kai dotike. Um, so here we start out with our noun, which is third declension is sarx, and it's sarkos is genitive, genike. 
Uh, so if I want to say uh, tes sarcos, because it's feminine, hey sarks, right? Uh, tes sarcos, so there's the genitive, tes sarcos, um, thelucon, right? Uh, hey sarks, hey thelucon, feminine, tes, and and I guess I need to remind you, I haven't even said it, The um, how do you say article? Um, so to arthron, to arthron, to uh, our throne, I think throne, our throne. I don't I think the accent is on the first syllable. Let's check that. Our throne. So, our, oh, our. what? Oh, <laughs> I forgot about the our throne. Sorry, forgot about the row right after it. Yeah, there you go. First syllable. There you go. Our throne. But I, I left it out here too, didn't I? Mm. That's a bad habit. So our throne. So our throne. So there's the article. Um, article, and it has other meanings. I mean, all these gr grammar terms are not exclusively. They can only meet this. No, all the grammar terms are basically borrowed from, um, you know, the words. You know, that have other definitions. Which that's true for just about any word, because a word always has multiple definitions, right? So, but you know, cateton grammaticon, according to the grammar, then hey mes legomen tuto. You know, hey, hey, mes or tuto se mine cateton uh, grammaticon. This means according to the grammar, right? So, article. To uh, orthon se mine article, anglisti. You know, right. Okay. So, anyway, yeah, let me get rid of that and pull that down here as well with our grammar discussions down here. Um, yeah, anyway, here's the verb, final role. So, um, in sarki. So there we go. So hypothesis n kai dotike. Kai dotike. Dotike pitosis. And the um, dative um, case, right? So in sarki, so here's for sarks, tuto estin um, katetein dotiken, according to the dative, right? Uh, ptosin. Katetein dotiken uh, dotiken. Uh, according to the dative uh, case. Uh, so that's what we say. So in, sorry, so if we want to say in something, like, you know, in the house, right, we can use the uh, feminine version, hey, te luke, uh, or to te lucon, um, to te lucon, the feminine, es ten oikia. Um, e, remember e, eta, with the soft breathing mark and the acute, um, e, or, right, e, uh, ho oikos oikos the house right so both of those words amphotoroi both amphotoroi um durantai se mining they can mean um host uh, a family a whole spirit like like a family whole spirit uh tuto like a family a a eta soft breathing mark and acute right a um host uh uh a house Right, Anglisti house, right? So uh, it can mean both, right? So, so if I say in te oikia in the house, right? So te oikia est en dotike. So in the house, in sarki. So in flesh, right? That's what it says. Theos efainaroth, uh, So a third person singular there, right? Efainaroth in sarki. So he was revealed, he was made clear in flesh, right? Or God was revealed um, in flesh. Um, et dikai. Apotasomai humin.